Mike, a stripper, gets noticed by a socialite, Max Andrew Mendoza, who takes him to London. She gives him a chance to pursue his dreams, but a lot is at stake for her. Dance has always been special to Mike, but it couldn't save his small company in Miami. He finds himself packing up shop with unrealized dreams because of the global pandemic. Mike is now a bartender and is working at Max Sandra's party. Bored housewives gossip about her and think she can't go back to London to her ex-husband Roger. But she can't ignore her daughter, Sadie, and apparently Roger wants their relationship to still work. As she closes in on the gossiping ladies, they thank her for throwing a great fundraiser. Max looks tired, and Mike asks if she's getting what she wants. She knows no one has any idea about her project, yet they keep giving her money every year. Mike thinks it's because people just like to look at what they can't have. Kim and her husband ask Mike for a drink. Kim recognizes him, but Mike has no idea if he has ever met her. She finally remembers him as the cop from her pledge party. Mike was a stripper who danced with her at the party. They don't mention the details, but her husband hopes she didn't get arrested. Mike claims he let her off with a warning. She's now on Max's legal team and specializes in divorce. When Mike is wrapping up, his manager asks him to meet Max. She is on a call with Roger and discusses how comfortable she is about Sadie's date with the chaperone. Mike tries to leave since she's busy, but she cuts the call and stops him. She asks if he likes bartending, but he claims he does something else he doesn't want to explain. Kim has told Max about him, and she asks how much he charges for dancing. Mike doesn't do that anymore, and turns to leave. Max feels bad about offending him, and claims to be confused about what she's doing. She has had the worst year, and doesn't know what to do about it. But she still asks what he would charge if he danced one last time. He randomly asks for 60,000, which she thinks is a lot for a silly dance like Kim claimed. But Kim also mentioned it will take her mind off things, and Max is willing to pay six grand if he's as good as Kim described. He closes the doors and starts rearranging things in her house. He brings a chair for her and asks for music. He knows she has no idea what she just bought, but offers to give her a good time. He also asks her to slap him if she feels uncomfortable at any point. He asks for permission to touch her and takes her hand to place it on his abs. He starts dancing for her and makes sure she's involved in the process. It gets too heated and sensual, and Max seems to be having a great time. They keep moving with each other till they end up in bed. She thinks he moves like water and would have even paid him much more if she knew this night was going to be so good. It doesn't matter to Mike now, because he won't take her money for this. She asks him to come to London with her for a month. He doesn't want to uproot his life, but she offers a job that's perfect for the creative person in him. She offers to pay him 60000 for a month, and assures him it'll not be out of his comfort zone. They're on a plane to London, where he jokes about his body being a work of genetics. Max explains that she's rich because Roger's family is in the media, and they own everything. She thinks her marriage ruined everything, and asks if he is married. She doesn't reveal what the job is, but assures him it's strictly professional. Max is also fine with Mike not dancing anymore, and feels special that she got Magic Mike's last dance. She thinks he has other talents, and promises this job is what he needs. She clarifies that they won't have sex again. He feels reassured, and explains he's not in a relationship, because they tend to not work well for him. They arrive at Max's place in London, and her assistant, Victor, shows Mike to his room. Mike wants to know Victor better, but he keeps being formal about where everything in the room is. He isn't allowed to share what Mike is doing there, since Max likes to give surprises. Max credits Victor for convincing her to own the place she's taking Mike to. Her other option after the settlement was a sand and gravel pit, which her mother-in-law is very attached to. She has finally found the purpose of the place she owns, and she prepares to surprise him. She asks Victor to stop at Liberty first, so they can get proper clothes for Mike with Hard's help. Max then takes him to the Radigan Theater, which Roger's family used to own. Roger fell in love with Max at the theater, back when she was an insecure actress. Mike meets the manager, Woody, who is excited about Mike becoming the director. A group is rehearsing for the play called Isabel Ascendant, where the woman has to choose between money or love. Max thinks it's a waste of time, and doesn't want women to be in a position to choose. She introduces herself as the legal owner of the theater. She wants them to shut down the play, which frustrates the director, Matthew. They're at full capacity every night, but Max wants the theater to evolve. She only fires Matthew from the group, and claims he'll be replaced by the brilliant choreographer she met in Miami. She hypes Mike up, and claims his artistry made her feel ecstasy. She now wants every woman walking into the theater to feel the same way. Max is excited about the look on Roger's face when he learns what she's doing with the theater. She had to put Mike on the spot because she didn't want him to overthink. The actors have quit after the announcement, because of which, Max saved thousands in labor union fees. This frees up more money for Mike and his dancers. Mike feels there are better ways of getting back at an ex than putting up a strip show in his theater. But for Max, this is a revolution, and she wants to wake up the society that has forgotten how to feel passionate. He doesn't know anything about directing theater, but she can help out with that. She just needs him to put up a one-night show on the stage that month. Zadie wonders who Mike is, and reminds Max they had a meeting. Max claims she was busy with the new director of the play. Sadie thinks they're hooking up, but Mike clarifies her mother is paying him to not hook up. 
Zadie wonders what Mike plans to do with Act 3, because it's currently an outdated and misogynistic climax. Max agrees, which is why she's trying to send a message with her new play that women get whatever they want. Zadie still feels like this is one of Max's phases where she starts a new project every year. She hires a new person and wants to make a difference in the world, but it never works out because of some obstacle. Zadie informs him that Max missed a meeting with their therapist, who thinks Max tries new things to avoid her guilt. Max promises to reschedule the appointment, but Zadie is still not convinced. Roger learns about Max's plans from his mother. He doesn't know the details and hopes Zadie will fill him in. His mother wants some changes in the agreement, but Roger doesn't want another fight because of this. Mike video calls his friends back home and promises to pay back the money they invested in his company. His friends don't care because they invested in him. But Mike still feels the burden and explains about his gig in London. He claims he got it after giving a rich lady a lap dance. His friend, Tarzan, asks him to not take sex work lightly, especially if it gives returns. Another friend, who is into astrology, astrology, points out that he saw great things in Mike's chart. They're all very supportive of his comeback on the stage. But he's only directing and not performing that month. Victor is waiting patiently for Mike to finish his call, but Max barges in with him. She has some ideas and wants Mike's opinion on them. When she shows him a video of a dancer, Antonio, on her phone, Zadie starts overhearing them. Max thinks there's an elegance to him, and they need more trained dancers rather than strippers for this. She still needs some passion, and Mike approves of him if she likes him too. She is encouraged and feels like Mike already has a vision for the show. They don't have time to meet in Rome, so Max's producer, Renata, has already arranged for Antonio to fly down. Renata has assembled some dancers with amazing talent, and they're all athletic and looking to please. They start interviewing these candidates, and the men try their best to impress Max. They even go around the street looking for talent, and find the kind of dancers they're looking for. Mike and Max discuss the options, and start shortlisting candidates. When someone gets grabby with Max, Mike steps in. They also head to the airport to pick up Antonia. Max knows she has stumbled upon something of significance, and wants to explore more. So, she starts reading about the history of dance. For Mike, it's more about finishing something he started. Max and Mike address the candidates, and Mike wants them to know they've been selected for their variety of skills. None of them are strippers, or have stood it in front of thousands of women. Mike has done that, and knows even nice moms can make a man feel very scared. It will happen to them too, and he wants the men to be prepared. They have one month to turn all of them into the greatest strippers. After that, they will have to learn to defend themselves from women who can't control their desire for them. Hannah, who plays Isabel in the original play, is fascinated by Mike's speech. Max didn't technically fire her, so she is in the theater since she's still drawing her salary. Max doesn't want her there, and clarifies that she doesn't need her services. But Isabel has been very curious about the new director's vision. She hates playing Isabel because of how misogynistic it is. She was only acting because it was a stable job that pays well. Max claims she's moved by her speech, and thinks Hannah could be their audience. But Mike reminds Max they're still calling the play Isabel Ascendant. It's only to draw the audience and confuse them later, but Mike thinks they can use the actual opening of the old play for this. One that can lead them to the surprise element. He also thinks since the show is about women, it would benefit with a female lead. He hires Hannah as Isabel in the play, since she was already doing it. Max isn't too pleased, especially when Hannah flirts with Mike and feels bad he's not dancing. They start rehearsing, and Mike asks Jackson to be the low-class sexy friend of Isabel's husband, Harold, in the first act. As all the men dance with Hannah, Max asks them to stop. She thinks the whole act needs to have a plot, and the men can't start dancing out of nowhere. She wants the strong female lead to have an objective, but she doesn't know what that is yet. She just knows the woman doesn't want this life. She can't run away either, because she has family obligations. She would even lose her standing in society and her identity. For her, the show needs to be sensual and solve the woman's dilemma. But Max doesn't really think a magic unicorn can come down and make her wildest fantasies come true. This sounds like a great idea to Mike, but Max refuses to sponsor something like a horse for him. Mike is preparing for a dinner with Max's friends, and asks Victor for his help. Victor has been with Roger and Max for 18 years, and knows that these friends can be difficult. While helping him, Victor takes out the tie, because he's sure these friends will laugh at him for it. Max thinks Mike looks great in the suit, and they head for the party. As the narrator, Sadie thinks everyone belongs to a social circle. Social rejection can be very painful for some people, but Mike doesn't know that yet. He thinks dance can bring everyone together, even snobs. The friends ask Max for some gossip, but she already knows they speak to Roger too. They try to deny it, but Bill points out how great it is that Roger has broken things off with the other girl. Phoebe thinks what he did wasn't right, and it'll take time for Max to feel better. But Max already feels great, and wants them to know she is the happiest she has been. She asks Mike to describe his vision for the play. He starts by claiming it's important to honor the source material. But Max doesn't let him continue, and wants the other parts to be a surprise. Phoebe praises Mike for reviving a classic, 
but Mike thinks they're sort of stripping down and spanking the script. Max cuts in again and suggests that Mike is speaking in metaphors. They ask about the theatrical community in Miami and think Mike must have done a lot of work for Art Basel. He seems surprised about who that is, which is received by silence from the crowd. But he easily handles the situation and passes it off as a joke. He knows it's the most famous art fair in his city, and Max is relieved. Phoebe wants to watch the show if it's as interesting as Mike. When Max leaves for a bit, everyone comments on how great she looks. They laugh at the term divorce because they don't think it's final. They have an agreement currently, but the family prenup is very complicated. They know Max will have to stay with him if she doesn't want to end up with no money. Mike and Max discuss how fake these friends are on the way back. Max thinks only Zaid is real in her life and wonders if Mike is too. Mike feels like a dream to her and she tries to seduce and kiss him. But he stops her in the middle to confirm something. She gets offended and knows it was a stupid move. She blames it on being drunk, even if Mike clarifies he was just surprised. But it's too late, and she doesn't let him say more to further embarrass her. Zadie is working on a novel in the morning about the people she observes. Mike tries to talk to Victor, but he dismisses him. Zadie thinks if Victor acts like he likes him, then he certainly hates him. But if he acts like he hates Mike, it might be a sign of respect. Mike wonders why Zadie addresses Max by her full name. Zadie thinks it'll be a lie to call her mother if she's adopted. Mike wants her to know Max is doing her best for her. But Sadie feels like Mike loves her. Mike explains that he just feels grateful because no one has believed in him like Max does. Roger comes to ask for Max and comes across Mike. He is polite to him and pretends to not care that Mike is staying there. Antonio dances with Max on a set they prepared together and she's very impressed. Mike admits it's good, but he needs to figure out where to add it in the show. It's Harry's turn next and he takes the stage with Hannah. He gives an impressive performance and Mike thinks the dance part of what he did was perfect. But he wants more sensuality from him. For this permission song, he wants Harry to take permission from the woman and maintain a connection with her throughout. Mike shows him how to do it better, but Max cuts them again. She reminds him they have a huge stage and can't just keep everything on one chair. The stage starts getting prepared for the performance. Zadie explains how dance, back in the day, was an acceptable social form of physical contact. It has now become a pleasure activity to heal some wounds. As Mike is rehearsing with the dancers, someone asks them to stop. Max gets a notice from the Historical Architecture High Committee. Max needs written approval for any changes to the property as the owner. If there's no approval, she is expected to restore it to its original position. Max knows these are Roger's tactics to control her. She's mad about him sleeping with his assistant and still controlling her life. If they go ahead with the show, it could result in a huge fine and seizure of property. Max knows that even if she pays the fine, Roger will find a way to manipulate things and shut them down. Max feels powerless, but wonders who they can seduce to get the approval. Zadie finds out that the chairwoman is Edna Eaglebauer, who has the power to grant a special exemption. There's nothing about her on social media, but her housing records indicate that she's single. They start following Edna around, and Jackson watches her shut down an esteemed production like Swan Lake. Max asks them to brainstorm about what Edna wants. Mike thinks they need a woman's perspective, and asks what Max wanted before Miami. Max remembers she wanted to escape her life, till she had a magical moment that changed things forever. This makes them realize Edna needs to get the same kind of experience Max did to change her. As Edna boards the bus the next time, all passengers are from Max's team. They put on such an impressive performance that she approves their changes. Max and Mike get into a heated debate about which song they need to use for the show. Mike is satisfied with their original plan, but Max doesn't think they have a good enough finale. He doesn't see any issue with everyone dancing into the crowd, but it seems too overdone to Max. She wants something different and personal, and asks Mike to dance in the finale. He doesn't want to, because this is all about a woman's perspective. But she still wants something personal from Mike, and asks him to open up. He has opened up enough to her, and feels bad she didn't notice. She thinks he's still being difficult, and asks Victor to handle him. Victor knows Max tends to overcomplicate things, but she usually knows exactly what she wants with Mike. When he asks why Victor doesn't work for Roger instead of her, he claims she has bigger balls. He leaves when Max comes back to ask Mike to make up his mind. He hugs her and asks her to relax, and promises to give her the happy ending she wants. They continue working on the show, and Zaid feels they should have considered how love and trust are related to dancing. Edna interrupts their practice and feels bad about it. She thinks they're all amazing, but she has to shut them down. Her approval was denied by the MP's office because their stage height is slightly higher than the norm. Max asks Mike to keep practicing while she handles this. She asks Roger for an explanation, but he claims he's trying to look out for her. He thinks her judgment is clouded, because she's making a stripper like Mike direct this show. He calls her desperate as she gets older and reminds her of their settlement agreement. There's a clause about harming the family brand. If she puts on this show, his mother's lawyers will definitely fight to take back every penny she got from the settlement. He asks her to think about Zadie and not give in to her fantasies. Max thinks Victor is judging her, but he knows she was falling in love with Mike. 
That one dance with him changed everything for her. It has made her realize the best version of herself. But she now feels like an embarrassment. She's glad Mike takes her seriously and believes in her. But she feels powerless in front of Roger and knows she'll have to shut this down. She thinks at least she'll find out if that dance meant as much to Mike as it did to her. She doesn't give any details, but informs Mike they need to shut down. She even wants Victor to book a flight back for him. Mike is very confused and doesn't understand why she's backing out now. He knows she's passionate about this show and doesn't want her to give up again. He taunts her for leaving another project unfinished like Zadie claims she usually does. She tries to argue about how he doesn't have a good ending either, but Mike is more frustrated and doesn't care about the money. He knows they are both proud of what they have created and refuses to give up. He knows the theater can't shut down till Monday and there's still a lot they can do. He asks Max to not give up because she's very good at this. He also knows Roger never showed any appreciation for her. But she ignores his protests and leaves. Mike gets back to the theater and asks Woody to get him a plumber and a ballerina. Max refuses to eat and has shut herself inside the room. Victor wants to keep it a secret from her that he slipped the keys to the theater to Mike. If the lawyers find out that Mike accidentally got the keys, Max will need plausible deniability. Zadie gets a message from Mike about the grand finale on Sunday. Victor is impressed and thinks Mike can pull this off. Mike starts sleeping over in the theater and works a lot harder to put on the show. He prints out invitations, and Zadie helps him by hacking into Max's account. She then sends the invite to everyone in Max's social circle. Mike even manages to get the ballerina from Swan Lake for their show. Max is curled up in blankets when Victor and Zadie try to help her get dressed. When they insist on leaving for the theater, Max knows Mike must have gone ahead with it. She is worried it will be a disaster, but Zadie and Victor assure her their support. Zadie knows most people are turning up that night out of curiosity. This audience would turn out to be the only people who learn the story of Max and Mike is told through dance. Mike encourages the performers before the show begins and joins Woody upstairs. He notices Max in the crowd and they start the show. The opening act of Isabel Ascendant begins with Isabel and Walter discussing a secret Harold can never know. Harold announces he's spending the summer at home because Isabel is pregnant. He hopes to have a son and many more children to carry on his legacy. This discussion makes Isabel panic, and she calls out to her imaginary friend, Unicorn. Max notices Mike giving his voice for the Unicorn offstage. He asks Isabel to tell everyone how she feels. She takes the mic and claims she's confused about her feelings. She doesn't want these two guys to be her only options. She doesn't even want to choose and hopes they leave her alone. The Unicorn claims she can have anything she asks for. Isabel tests it out by asking for a guy in a tank top and jeans. After her request, the men on the stage strip to reveal just that. She then asks for a bad boy who answers all texts, and a man with a puppy. Like this, she gets everything she asks for in different men. She knows she's not the only girl excited in the room with these options. The crowd cheers, and Isabel wants all of them to feel how she feels. Through the magic mic she's holding, she commands the unicorn to let everyone enjoy the show. All the men come out to dance for them, and all the ladies in the crowd have a great time. She introduces more men to the stage, and things keep getting steamy for the women. When they get shirtless, Victor makes sure to cover Zadie's eyes. When the next song is announced, Zadie and Victor start leaving. Mike has asked them to leave at the end of the song suits and return after Pony. Isabel announces that things are about to get sexier. For the permission song, the dancers bring Edna, Renata, and another woman on the stage. They perform the same set Mike rehearsed, and the ladies feel the utmost pleasure. Mike prepares for the next performance about making that one person feel special. He dances in the rain with the ballerina, and it reflects all the special moments he has shared with Max. While watching him dance, Max remembers those moments too. When Pony starts playing, Sadie wants to go in. But Victor reminds her they have to wait till the performance is over. Mike changes after the performance, while the other dancers entertain the audience. Zadie is sure it's over after the applause, and takes Victor in. Mike hugs them and looks around for Max. He notices Max looking all over for him, and walks over to tell her she looks beautiful. She thinks this was all Mike's effort, but he considers them a team. Mike wants her to know he loves her. She kisses him, but he stops her again to ask if she is still planning to be with Roger. She assures him she's never going back. She is free and broke because of this show, but she doesn't care anymore. He claims he can't do this as a joke, and comes back to hug her again. In the end, Zadie thinks no one fully understands dance. But she knows it's not logical, and she learned this when she met a lonely stripper called Mike. 